Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Wednesday, June the 12th, 2024. Continuing our conversation uh, on, the, on the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, probably one of, if not the most difficult book of the Bible to understand because it's this apocalyptic literature with all kinds of weird visions and symbols and numbers. And it's almost as if it was written in code, which you know, many scholars believe it was in a sense that only Christians would really understand what these things meant, and especially the uh, the references to the Old Testament. You'd have to be have some understanding of of Scripture to be able to interpret what it was saying. Um, but some important lessons to to keep in mind. I want to share a little bit more about that. Um, that it, it's it's very very vivid language and so forth, um, but but not to be taken literally. Unfortunately, many people do. And the other thing is it, it was addressing um, a particular time in history and, and, and offering a word of comfort and hope and promise to Christians who were going through a difficult time, either because of outright persecution against them for being Christians or kind of a related sort of thing of pressure to, be, uh, to worship the emperor uh, as a deity, which of course would have been you know, totally unacceptable uh, to Christians. And so um, I've often thought about this because so many times when we hear about the book of Revelation, when we hear things in, um, you know, on television or, or, you know, even some of the books that are written and so forth, it's almost as if it's, if it's, it's prophecy that's predicting the things that are going to happen right now. And that never made sense to me. Why? What would it mean two thousand the people living two thousand years ago, if um, there were prophecies about what was going to happen in in two thousand and twenty four? Makes makes no sense. It was prophecy, though, in a sense, the way Old Testament prophecy works is not predicting the future so much as interpreting the times, interpreting what was going on um, with um, in the Roman Empire when at that time it was very difficult. And there was increasing persecution uh, for being a Christian. And the other thing to keep in mind is that there's this big cosmic battle that's going on and being described in the book of Revelation. But the basic point or the basic claim, I guess you will, is that the battle's over. It was, it was won on Easter morning. Um, the, the struggle is over. Um, and that's why in my sermon this past Sunday, I likened it to, you know, D-Day, the invasion of Normandy, which of course was last week, which at that point the war wasn't over, but for all intents and purposes, the final outcome was decided once the Allies invaded, successfully invaded, uh, invaded Europe. Um, and so, again, reading from some of the notes that the, the, the United States, U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops uh, produced a piece that, that reminding us that the Book of Revelation again has its time in a has its origins in a time of crisis, but it does remain valid and meaningful for Christians of all times. Not not as a predictor of necessarily what's going to happen, but to understand uh, how it is that we continue and persevere uh, in faith when there's evil around us, there's suffering, there's death. Um, and that promise, of course, from Jesus, actually in the Gospels, Matthew 28, uh, Behold, I'm with you always until the end of the age. In other words, those who remain faithful um, and confident uh, in, in our risen Lord and in his promise to come again sh should have no fear. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be suffering and, and persecution, even death, um, but it, it's not like the, the ultimate outcome is, is in question. Uh, no matter what adversity or sacrifice we may have to endure and experience, uh, in the end, uh, we all, as Christians, will join in a triumph over evil um, and the forces of evil uh, because of our faith in Christ the victor. Um, and so that's the enduring message uh, of the book. It's a message of hope and consolation and challenge uh, for all who believe. The author of the book calls himself John. We're going to talk more about this in the next couple of days, but just to kind of introduce it, um, apparently because of his Christian faith, he's been exiled to the rocky island of Patmos, which was a Roman penal colony. 
Although he never claims to be John the Apostle, whose name is attached, of course, to the fourth gospel, uh, he was identified as such by several of the early church fathers, including Justin, Arrhenius, Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, Cyprian, Hippolyt Hipp Hippolytus, but it was denied by other church fathers, including Dennis of Alexandria, Eusebius of Caesarea, Cyril of Jerusalem, Gregory Nazianzen, and John Chrysostom. So there's kind of a mixed um, feeling about that. Uh, scholars would tell us, and I'm going to say more about this in the next few days, that the vocabulary, grammar, and style make it doubtful uh, that the book could have been uh, written by the same person who was responsible for the fourth gospel. Um, although there are some uh, similarities and affinities theologically between the two books, but one could say that really of a lot of books in the in the Bible. Um, and if anything, John was the John of Revelation, uh, was a disciple of Jesus, um, and maybe a disciple of John the Apostle as well, um, who was associated with that uh, part of the world. And the date of the book, as I shared on Sunday, is somewhere uh, in the reign of Domitian, uh, the Roman emperor who ruled from um, 81 CE or the Common Era to 96, 81 to 96, somewhere uh, in that. So the very end of that first century, which makes it also uh, the very last book to be to be written. We're going to talk more about that, talk more about the author, talk more about how certain, a little bit more in depth about how books made it into the Bible and some didn't. But uh, You'll have to tune in the next couple of days for that. For now, um, hope you have a great day and looking forward to continuing this conversation with you tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.